Hey, be blessed in Jesus' name. I've got a lot of words of knowledge from the Lord last night. He also uh, visited me, showed me an outline of himself, and got really emotional and shared with me what he's about to do uh, for the church. Uh, then he also showed me gifts that he's giving out in the season, and they're really, <coughs> really cool. Excuse me, I'm still um, overcoming this this uh, flu-like symptoms. So I want to be respectful of your time. I'll jump right into this. Not all of these are going to have a big influence on your life, uh, but I think most of them will. One last thing I want to say, and then we'll begin. I really feel like there's a spiritual convergence going on right now where there's next to no lag time between the things that are happening in the heavenlies and them reflecting here on earth, like the plowman overtaking the reaper. Basically, he who breaks up the ground and prepares it for seed is ready to tread on the heels of him who's like harvesting the seed that was just planted. In other words, very fast growth, very fast sowing and reaping. And it's very important to be operating like bearing fruit in the spirit and avoiding the works of the flesh. Well, let's get into it. <clears throat> The first thing that I saw while waiting on the Lord was a t-shirt and it had a Nike swoosh logo on it, but instead of it being that smooth logo, it was a little bit jaggedy, like clumpy diamond, well not diamond, but like triangle angular. And instead of saying Nike or just do it below this jaggedy swoosh, it said the word brutal. Uh, brutal means extremely ruthless, cruel, um, unfeeling, but in short, don't be surprised if you see them trending or if they're in the news. Um, and I'd also encourage you to like source your clothing from a place that takes care of the people that makes the clothing uh, and doesn't just exploit. Okay. Next, I heard Scotty Pippen. And I know that he recently launched, launched his NFT collection, but I sense he's going to, be, going to be making some splashes in the news again soon. I heard this one. This was really awesome. God is natural treasure. God is natural treasure. I say this all the time, but if heaven was just an empty parking lot with Jesus in it, would that be enough for you? And it also reminded me of this interview I saw a long time ago where Bob Marley was being interviewed and the guy was like, are you rich? And Bob Marley just kind of laughs and shrugs. He's like, you know, because he's wearing a tattered t-shirt. He's got dreadlocks. He's like, I'm rich, but not in the way that you think about riches and money. I think God wants to elevate the mindset of his bride. He doesn't want a poverty mindset bride. Um, and it's like the treasures of heaven and the treasures of who he is are so much more than just stuff and numbers on a screen. It's, it's understanding that if you have Jesus, you have everything. Um, so there's this person whose name I won't mention, but... They've done a really great job just being a Christian and loving their neighbors and <clears throat> sharing uh, the gospel with people. Quick side note, something that I like to do for fun is whenever I have water, you know, I just be like, I command this water to turn into wine in Jesus' name. I'm going to get it one of these days. I really look forward to it. It's, you know, wh why not? Uh, but I had this vision or this impression, a trance is probably the better word, but Seeing like him flip his city, seeing him have an impact on his neighbors, seeing him take somebody who's broken and bring them to Christ, um, that is making water become red water, is what I heard. Like, uh, that is like a form of turning water into wine. Later on, I heard Biofactory Not Good Germany. And it was accompanied by this vision of uh, like a picture of two fried shrimp that came together to form a toxic, danger, poison type logo. Later on, I was thinking about mega churches and prosperity pastors, people that have robbed God's children. And I heard the word of the Lord say, I'm going to get rid of that dead animal. Like cleansing, like cleaning house, cleansing the house. Similar type of thing that I would hear my grandpa say growing up, like, oh, I'm going to get rid of that dead animal. That type of a tone. Prosperity in and of itself is not bad, but taking the church's prosperity to line your pockets, that's wrong. So he's cleaning house in that regards. Earlier on in the day, I um, 
opened up the Bible to Ecclesiastes. I didn't want to read it because I, I had already read that recently, so I skipped over it. And then last night I heard um, like a melodious tone being sung like vanities, vanities, vanities. So that was a reminder for me to jump back into Ecclesiastes. And I also think it's going to be a timely book as you see a lot of changes happening in the world soon. There's a time to sow, there's a time to reap. There's a time to be born, time to die. All of those things, a lot of the church is going to find themselves in Ecclesiastes probably. That's just my own add-ons to it. I was praying and I asked the Holy Spirit, can you go search the deep things of God and bring me something? Like it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. This verse has come up a lot, a lot, a lot this week. And it's also going to be applicable to what I mentioned in a second with when the Lord uh, spoke to me last night. So I was in a trance. The spirit came back to me and showed me that there's like, uh, there's the celebration in the heart and mind of God that the children are starting to get it and are getting filled up. The celebration was like the father and the son, but just an overall joy about this. There was a Bible verse that came along with it. I think it was like first Corinthians 18, sorry, first Kings 18. I don't recall. There was also an image of a golden coin. And then there was this song. Uh, well, it was like a chant. Um, deeper roots, bigger fruits, deeper roots, bigger fruits, deeper roots, bigger fruits. So it was three times. And there's this emphasis every time that the words deeper roots was proclaimed, it was like referring to the children. So there's this overall excitement that the children, like the youth, they're getting it. And um, like I, I was getting goosebumps while writing this down, but I think like <clears throat> kids are going to be praying for their classmates in school and watching them get healed. Kids are going to be praying for classmates and see limbs grow back like during recess. You're going to see awesome stuff like that. So while writing that down, making that note, I did hear again, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And this leads me to the next thing that I heard. And this is where I saw an outline of the Lord last night. And I heard him say this, I has not seen, sorry, I, I heard this word of knowledge first, and then he spoke. So I heard the word of knowledge, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor mind imagined. That I heard Jesus say, in a very emotional, passionate, loving, deeply moved manner, he goes, I'm going to send down all of it. Referring to like heaven's resources for us. He goes, I'm going to send down all of it. He was deeply emotional. Like this was one of the greatest acts of love that he's ever gotten to do. And that he's waited a long time for this. Ephesians 1 says that Christ has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. The Sermon on the Mount, uh, you know, we're given like the church's prayer. When you pray, pray like this. And part of that is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's not a peaceful prayer. That's a military prayer. That is a warlike invasive prayer. That kingdom invade this kingdom. We're entering into this time where you're seeing physical manifestations play out with almost no lag time with the things that are happening in heaven. Like they're... There's such convergence taking place. He's saying, I'm pouring down all of it. Like I'm giving you guys all of it. I'm holding nothing back from the church. Which is going to be really cool when I share some of the uh, gifts that he showed me. They're awesome. <clears throat> so I realized that I was not going to be able to sleep this night. <laughs> I got out of bed. <coughs> Excuse me. I checked my clock. So like I got right out of bed. I checked my clock and it was 5.55 a.m. <clears throat> I was thinking about some of this and on December 18th, I had this trance where I saw like a picture of being blindfolded the way that you would do when taking somebody to like a surprise birthday party or you have a big reveal, you know, you'd blindfold them and then you let them take off the blindfold and see. Um, and when I first heard that, I was, you know, very intrigued and open to whatever it would mean. And then he has been saying this verse, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of the man, the things that God has prepared for him. 
that's kind of what this is referring to. Like he's about to give us that big reveal and bless us in such an incredible, incredible way. So later on in the night, I was thinking about this idea of turning water into wine. And something that I made a note of that's just kind of a fun thought, and I wrote this down, is Jesus. Like, he blesses so abundantly more than we could think. Um, Him turning water into wine. And that choice wine had an estimated value of probably around $400,000. Not that you can put a price on the work of, of Christ, but I just, you know, it's an entertaining little nugget to think and chew on. Okay, in the morning, um, when I went back to bed, I just had a lot on my mind that I was, I was weighing on. I've been praying for a correction, and trust me, if you want to hear the Lord's voice, it's a hard prayer to pray, but he, he really wants us to be open to his correction. In the same way that my dog, if she doesn't come when I say come, I, that can be dangerous for her. I, I want to correct that out of her, and yeah, it requires some discipline, maybe some scolding or some correction, but... It's for her own benefits, and it's, it's from a place of love. And so being open to the Lord's correction will definitely, yeah, I don't know. For me, I, I hear from him. So I was weighing on some things, and I just needed some positive affirmation after that. And I was just like, Lord, like, <laughs> like can, you, uh, can you just give me some good stuff here? <clears throat> so he showed me some gifts that he's given out. I saw, I had this trance where there was a briefcase put before me. It's one of those high-end briefcases that you would carry something valuable and expensive in, like a metal briefcase. Um, I waited for what felt like a few minutes, and I had this sense of uncertainty because sometimes when I have these trances, I can only stay in them for a little bit, and then I wake up or I come out of it, I come back to, uh, and I was just like, oh, God, I don't want this to be like dangling a treat in front of a dog and not actually getting to see what's inside the briefcase. So I was just like... Like, stop showing me the briefcase. I want to see what's what's in it. But it was like, no, I was sustained for a little while, shown this briefcase. Briefcase opened up, and then I could only see a tiny little uh, part of what was inside of it. And it was just like this black foam, this protective sponge type of material. <clears throat> it was that kind of uh, foam that often is inside of these types of briefcases. One second. <clears throat> I'm drinking a lot of coffee today because I got like no sleep yesterday. Um, so sorry for the quick interruptions, but so I saw the briefcase. I was sustained there for a couple of minutes. I saw the foam I was sustained there for a couple of minutes. And again, I'm just like, Lord, I, I, I want to see what's inside. You know, I don't want this to be a disappointing thing. So I settle myself down. I go into the trance again and he showed me these super cool looking guns. Now, these were not like man-made type of guns that we're used to. These were much more like retro coloring type guns. These were like Nerf gun type design, retro colors, smooth, but obviously not Nerf guns. They were more like Star Wars guns. One of them was a very long-barreled, modernized red musket. Another one was a yellowish pistol similar to the game from Duck Hunt. Very similar design. Um, that type of weaponry. Now, this sounds childish, but it's not. There was part of me that was doubting this, like, what are these, just toys? And while writing this out, the spirit, (coughs) excuse me, it was brought into remembrance um, that these came in a very serious metal expensive case with padding and that the Lord held me there for a few minutes because it, I'm pretty sure if he didn't, I wouldn't put it together that you only keep very valuable items in that type of a protective um, case and packaging. That detail can't be overlooked. I waited on the Lord a bit more and I heard equipped, being equipped to run. Then there was one more phrase. I kind of miswrote it, but it was something like this. Your Bible is equipped. Um, Like, you know, you get your, you get your equip equipping from the Bible. Equipped, being equipped to run. I could discuss some of the attributes of these gifts and show some interpretations like, well, one is a handheld pistol for short range combat. One is a long musket for long range combat and how that could represent, you know, up close and personal battles, bigger long distance battles, things of that nature. 
And there's really no shortage of scripture when it comes to being equipped, putting on the full armor of God, learning about the weapons of righteousness and warfare, learning about the sword of the spirit. There's a lot that I could go into and say about this. But in short, this was a gift for me. And I know that there's going to be more added to it as time goes on. But he's equipping his saints right now. And you want to be found in that place where you're responsible and trustworthy of the gifts that he wants to give out. He's not going to give you something that you can't steward properly or manage wisely in the same way that a parent wouldn't give their kid a brand new car if they don't know how to drive. Even though they would love to bless their kid, that car would destroy them. So this is a time to be, you know, he says he gives according to the ability in the parable of the talents. This is a time to be hanging out with the Lord, finding out what he has for you. And while chewing on this idea of being equipped to run, there's something I also want to share. Hebrews 12.1, obviously, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every hindrance and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, being equipped to run. But I also want to point out here, it doesn't say it's a marathon. It doesn't say that it's a sprint. It's a race, and we are called to run. We're called to run, and we run at different paces, and it's important to be in stride with the Lord, knowing your pace with him, and running the good race. If this has been helpful or encouraging, please like and subscribe. Understand that I'm going to keep putting in the work to get some manna from heaven. Um, but yeah, I appreciate any uh, comments, feedback, um, following, hitting the like button, all that good stuff. Most importantly, though, be blessed in Jesus' name and have a nice day.